The monarchy costs us, you, the taxpayer, 37 million a year, and every year they clock up another million. It's written into the law of our country that the Queen cannot receive less than the previous year. The value of the Queen's property is total 8.1 billion quid. Her personal wealth is 330 million quid. She's already got that, so you'd think you could afford to pay people more than 14 grand a year. You'd think that you could afford to give people more than zero hour contract. One has to be frugal. One don't know where one's next 330 million's coming from. The official figures are 40 million. It costs us 40 million a year to have royals, but we, if you include security and all their hosting that they do, and why wouldn't you? Because they do do that. <laughs> It's 200 million. Like you might know, that's like that's the equivalent of having 9,000 nurses and 8,000 police. Seems like a an odd economic system to employ. That's the thing that I can't get over. If we were starting from scratch right now, and so like we were like, right, we're going to build a society, and someone went, let's have a little old lady that each of us give some of our money to, and then they're really rich. They don't really have any responsibility. They live in a big palace. You'd go. Why? What's the point in doing that? That's what's happened. So when you sort of say like, you know, like I in my heart still like the monarchy, like, you know, I like the monarchy, but I've got to be more rational now. This is the time for change. This is the time for awakening. When you say, I want the royal family, what you're saying is, I don't want 9,000 nurses. I've been to an NHS hospital and there, it's definitely, when you're in there, when you're in the leukaemia ward with the, the kids with leukaemia, I think, Get me a little old lady somewhere in London gorging herself on generations of privilege. Get me that now. Oh, you could get some medicine for this kid. I said an old lady in a shiny hat. So it shows you that pageantry and tradition are used as a veil f to kind of guard privilege and nonsense. I love a bit of tradition. I love a bit of mythology. I think we should all have rituals that tie us together as a community. But rituals that enforce inequality should be looked at. I mean, what the hell? is going on. The Queen commands this honourable house to attend Her Majesty immediately in the House of Peers. Like, we're trying to just accept this, are we? That this sort of weird, bejeweled, mad fellow with a pair of clown's gloves as a necklace on comes the honourable house, like none of us think of politicians as honourable, we know some of them are paedophiles, we know they all fiddle their expenses, we know they're all on the take, it don't matter what kind of toy town mayor you get in there with a big daft stick to tell you that they're honourable, it just doesn't wash. That's why people believe in the Illuminati shit, because of this sort of stuff going on, what possible provenance can there be for this madness? Oh, and it just turns into lakeside. <laughs> We've got to get out of bloody door. My lords and members of the House of Commons, my government will legislate in the interests of everyone in our country. What? What about poor people? I do sometimes want to go to the Queen. What is the thing that you've got in your head that makes it all right for this to happen? Because it must be that you think that poor people are scum. Is it that? Because otherwise, how do you justify that mad, expensive hat? I'm afraid there is no money available for nothing. What's that thing on your head? Hmm? The thing on your head made out of precious diamonds. I couldn't possibly do this job without my shiny fucking expensive hat. Helping work working people get on, supporting aspiration, giving new opportunities the most, to the most disadvantaged. I mean, the fucking nerve. You could just take your hat off and go like that and build an hospital. I mean, in England, we have a queen for fuck's sake. A queen. We have to call her things like your majesty. Your majesty. Like she's all majestic, like an eagle or a mountain. She's just a person, a little old lady in a shiny hat that we paid for. Or your highness. What the fuck is that? What, she's high up above us at the top of a class pyramid on a shelf of money with her own face on it. We should be calling her Mrs. Windsor. In fact, that's not even her real name. They changed it in the war to distract us from the inconvenient fact that they were as German as the enemy that teenage boys were being encouraged, conscripted actually, to die fighting. Her actual name is Mrs. Saxa Coburg Gotha. Mrs. Saxa Coburg Gotha? No wonder they fucking changed it. It's the most German thing I've ever heard. She might as well have been called Mrs. Bratwurst Kraut Nazi. Titles have got to go. 
I'm not calling her your highness or your majesty just so we can pretend there isn't and hasn't always been an international cabal of rich landowners flitting merrily across the globe, getting us all to kill each other a couple of times a decade. From now on, she's Frau Saxe Coburg Goffer. Come on, Frau Saxe Coburg Goffer. It's time for you to have breakfast with her, Saxe Coburg Goffer. And you can make it yourselves. And by the way, we're nicking this fucking great castle you've been dossing in and giving it to 100 poor families. Actually, you can stay if you want. They'll need a cleaner. You all have to watch your lip, though, her Saxe Coburg Goffer. Some of them ain't white. It's the end of a long line reaching back. I think like Habsburgs are involved. You know, a few generations back, they're all German, of course, aren't they? Uh, well, Saxe Goethe is the real name of the royals. They changed their name because it seems we keep having wars with Germany and you can't have the Saxe Goethe's in Buckingham Palace. So people think, hey, why are all of our kids going to fight the Germans and like we're doing it for these Germans? These aren't the Saxe Goethe's, these are the Windsors. You love the Windsors. Okay sort of like really posh expensive big brother you know I mean, we all like the soap opera oh that one's done that that one at a goldfish that one it, it dressed up as a nazi they're all prince harry all of those oh that one's choked on a fish bone yeah it's just like i understand it as entertainment but the problem is is the underlying narrative is you're not as good as them and it's okay for some people to be in privilege while other people are starving in a western modern technologically advanced democracy that's the real story not this one's cute and that one's dopey he or she will automatically become fourth in line to the throne fulfilling william and catherine's obligation to ensure that the line of succession is secure that's a bit illuminati fulfilling their obligation i don't think that, uh, there's never a strategy i think george well, i think george will be over the moon he'll be thrilled um, having a, another smaller, younger brother, sister. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. The family, the family continues to grow. And of course, with that growing family, your prospects of becoming king reduced, don't they? <laughs> Great. Harry is no doubt the most sort of human of them, or at least he seems like it. Like, oh, I can imagine having a drink with him, mostly because he seems, generally speaking, to be pissed out if he's nut. But that is, again, not a distraction from, don't get distracted from the core issue. I keep getting distracted, oh, no, he's nice, look at his eyes, he's sort of sweet, and oh, no, I've seen him in that uniform, now unveiled a new waxwork of him. Don't get distracted, Russell. This is what means that certain people grow up poor. This is what means that certain people always end up in prison. This is what holds together a system where certain people will end up on drugs, where certain people will never get opportunities. It's held together by this. By removing this symbol, we have an opportunity to be free. This little boy is called Philip. His full name is Philip Schleswig Holstein Sonderberg Glucksburg, and he grew up in Germany. He was raised amongst his Nazi in laws, some of whom later became high ranking members of the SS. His Nazi relatives then sent him to this school in southern Germany, where he studied for a while under the Nazi curriculum. Philip later recalled that there was much heel clicking and shouts of Heil Hitler were compulsory. And here's Philip, in Darmstadt, in the heart of Germany, in November 1937, attending a family funeral for some of his Nazi in-laws. Marching in front of a Siegheiling crowd, this is Philip, next to Christoph, his SS brother-in-law, and Philip, his Nazi stormtrooper brother-in-law. Imagine if a man with a past like this had somehow ended up marrying into British aristocracy. Well, he did. And as we know, he got first prize. He became the Duke of Edinburgh, also known as Prince Philip, after marrying Princess Elizabeth, the future Queen of England. Like the Queen, like my grandparents, God rest their souls, if they heard me talking about the Queen like this, they'd be, oh no, Russell, no, she's lovely, the Queen. Like, and I've had that crap put in me, we can't help it every time we look at a pound note or a bloody stamp, there she is. You know, but the fact is, is that this is a great big gold smothered lot of bollocks. Look at the reality, the bank bailout cost the UK public, that's you, $850 billion. The UK has lost £800, pound, £850 billion pound to tax evasion since the crash. So you see, instead of taking £850 billion quid off of you, they could have took £850 billion quid off of people that are evading tax. They're not going to do that. She doesn't mention it. It's not an issue. It's not relevant to them. What the function of this pageantry, this bejeweled madness is to sustain and preserve itself and to maintain the dominant order, which requires you to be poor and ignorant. So that is what you will remain.
is actually the basis of the corruption in this country, because for every 20 pounds that are spent, the Bank of England creates maybe a thousand pounds fresh to give to their mates. You see, actually, this is this is quite dangerous. This is this is actually garbage. This is actually this is the root of the problem here in the UK is this this fiat currency, this money that's just printed out of thin air that's backed with a few images of the Queen and whatnot. And it's the how it's impoverishing. This is what creates the poverty in the UK. It's this garbage, this devil's currency, this pagan disgustingness. <laughs> now, this cryptocurrency is completely different. Even though I think of myself as a very radical man, when when you tear up Her Majesty the Queen. I do feel a pang. I've been very well conditioned and trained to see that as an, an act of terrible heresy. But you talk about in the book Revolution how people are seduced by the delusion of consumption. That delusion is fed by this ultimate piece of delusion, this ultimate illusion of value, of intrinsic value. This has no value, Russell. I completely agree with you. I entirely understand. And I suppose if essentially what we need are alternative systems and models, an alternative currency is an integral part of that. But uh, And for me, a, a new psychological and spiritual model, a new approach to life. What is the queen the monarch of? She is the monarch of inequality. She used to be a symbol of Britain and she's still a symbol of Britain. A symbol of an unequal, unfair, corrupt, disgusting nation. She sits at its head smothered in jewels while the people that put her there and serve her struggle along on nothing for nothing with zero hours. Should the Queen be put on a zero hour contract? I think she should. She was pregnant with the couple's second child, the palace said. As is the custom in these situations, a cute child is selected to give a bouquet of flowers to the royal and the royal has to sort of stoop patronisingly in to the ordinary child. Hello, ordinary child. How are you getting on? Not very well. I was at a food bank before I came here. I can't imagine what you mean, food bank. Aren't banks for keeping money in with my family's face all over it? So, could I have a single coin? Thanks for the flowers, the palace said, but suffering from acute sickness. As a normal person, doesn't it offend you that your fellow normal people have to be put in a sort of human paddock? They have to be in a sort of, right, if you want to look at the royals, you'll stand there behind the road. Oh, okay, we'll stand here. Oh, there goes the royal look, here he is. People are just willing to stand in a paddock because of really posh persons walking past. Get in your paddock. Generate money through their property portfolio that's worth seven billion. Oh, they ain't got a property portfolio. We'll have that and all. Oh. But you're forgetting their property portfolio, which they earned when they had a fruit and veg store on Covent Garden Market. But nicked that. But the whole system is about the enforcement and in continued inculcation of privilege. I don't want to be boring. My government will bring forward legislation to reform trade unions. Yeah, I mean, it's these trade unions. That's the problem. Working people coming together to have rights is a pain in the ass. With legislation encouraging employment by capping benefits. Encouraging employment by letting you starve to fucking death if you don't get a job. Things are bad, but they're going to get worse. The squeeze on benefits that Her Majesty has just mentioned will push 200,000 more children into poverty. Government stats show that rough sleeping in England has increased by 55% in the last five years, while the number of bed spaces in homeless accommodation centres fell by 7,000. New legislation will modernise the law on communications data and ban the new generation of psychoactive drugs. So don't ban psychoactive drugs, that's the only chance we've got to be a peace and quiet. Like, this whole thing looks like it's been conjured up as a consequence of psychoactive drugs. We've got to ban psychoactive drugs so we can have more ceremonies where billionaire pensioners can smother themselves in gold in front of a bunch of judges and posh tax avoiders and tell poor people to fuck off. Psychoactive drugs is the problem. In mind, mamas in jam, not mamas in arm. Bow from the head, not from the waist, don't curtsy. Mamas in jam, not mamas in arm. Bow from the head, not from the waist, don't curtsy. Mamas in jam, not mamas in arm. Bow from the head, don't curtsy. Mamas in jam, not mamas in arm. Bow from the head, don't curtsy. Mamas in jam, not mamas in arm. Bow from the head, don't curtsy. Mamas in jam, not mamas in arm. Bow from the head, don't curtsy. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, grab her fucking tits.